Welcome back to the channel ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another round of Bases Picks. Now I've got to do this one pretty quickly because the Triple G fight is actually happening in the early hours of the morning uh, for my US brethren it's I think 4 or 5 a.m. Um, and for us I believe it's about 10 a.m. with um, Triple G's ring walk supposed to be about 12. You know, on the odd occasion, on this particular one, the US fans will know what we feel like when we have to, you know, stay up to watch their fights. But I digress. Um, there's a few different cards on. I think there might be about five different cards. Um, so I'm going to go through all of them real quick, um, give my predictions on all the fighters that I do know, any of the ones I don't, I will touch on um, and just sort of say if I expect it to be a good fight or not. So without further ado, let's run through this weekend's action okay so kicking off with the triple g card um let me see if i can go through this fight which is taking place in japan um i'm gonna run through the undercard real quick um right so the first fight looks like it's a debut for both guys uh hirioka amaki and taiga kato never seen any of them so i can't comment um, Kazuki Anaguchi versus uh, Ryai, uh, Ryuji Yakomo Yamamoto. Um, I don't know that one, but the sec the next fight, Junto Nakatani versus Ryota Yame uh, Yamauchi. I know that I know those two very well. Um, I see that being a points win for Junto Nakatani. If I'm gonna be real. Um, then I got Shirashiro Yoshino versus Masayuki Aito. Um, Aito's a little bit long in the tooth now, to be fair. Like he's been around for a little while. Used to be quite, um, I guess, quite a bit of a force uh, back in the day. Had you know, had a pretty good, uh, pretty good standing. But he, he seems more of a gatekeeper-ish type of guy right now. Sort of on that last cusp of his, the last run of his career. I can only assume that um, Shuyuchi Yoshino, um, that's, this is supposed to be his platform builder. Anyway, now we get to the main event. So we got Golovkin versus Murata. Now I see this fight being very cagey at the start, purely because both guys haven't been in the ring for sort of the last year and a half. Um, Golovkin is still trying to go back to his boxing roots as opposed to stalking and walking people down and Murata is just sort of a natural boxer puncher anyway um, I feel that timing is going to be a big thing in this fight but it's going to take a little while for both of them to get back into the swing of things so I don't see a huge amount of action taking place within the first two to three rounds um, but I do see both of them landing quite well on each other um, sort of after that particular frame and then it's about who can take what now they've both shown that they can take a punch previously however Golovkin has shown that he can take punches from bigger punches than uh, Morata has that being said he's also been in a lot more battles a lot more wars he's four years older so maybe dining out on the chin and the toughness is something that he can't really do as much as he used to um, however i do see um golovkin basically just thudding and overwhelming morale um with morale sort of doing well to sort of survive like the first half of the fight from sort of rounds three to six uh with golovkin sort of getting underneath the the jab um, using his height disadvantage to his advantage on his way inside um, and I'm predicting a Golovkin KO of Morata within sort of rounds 9 and 10 um, to be honest I can't base that off of anything super factual because neither man has been in the ring for quite a long while but I feel like that's how this fight is going to play out. So I'm predicting uh, 10th round, um, or 9th or 10th round, um, KO or stoppage um, for uh, Gennady Golovkin, and we'll see if I'm right. 
Now, moving on to the next card. So next, I'm going to move over to the top rank card, which is going to be headlined by Michaela Mayer, and she's going to be taking on Jennifer Hahn. Um, if I run through the undercard quickly, uh, Virginia Foots versus Randy Lynn Morales. Um, so debut, so okay. Uh, Floyd Diaz, Blake Quintana, Duke Reagan versus Dio Olguian. Ol uh, Luis Alberto Lopez versus Raul Chirino, Andrew Maloney versus Gilberto Mendoza, Lindolfo Delgado versus Gustavo David Vittori, Jason Maloney versus Francisco Pedroza Portillo, uh, Giovanni Santillan versus Giovanni Barraza, and then Michaela Jennifer Hunt. Okay, A sides are pretty much dog walking this entire thing. Let's get to the main event. So Michaela Mayer, um, definitely one of the best technical boxers in and around the weights down, um, you know, sort of between 115, 112, 115, up to say like 130, 135. Um, Jennifer Hahn, um, not sure if she's in full recovery since the last fight she had with Katie Taylor where she came into the ring with a little bit of a, a stomach extent um you know sort of extension from um you know recently giving birth and whatnot so uh with that being said I think that um this will probably be a better weight for Jennifer Hahn but I think that Michaela May is going to look to try and make a statement and based off of the fight that she had with Maiva Hamadouche, knowing that she can actually get in the pocket and rough someone up and be successful, I have a feeling that she is going to go for the knockout in this fight and she may very well get a stoppage uh, sort of between rounds eight and nine. Um, so my prediction is gonna be Michaela Mayer by stoppage in the late rounds, rounds eight and nine, whether it's a knockout or a ref stops the fight, um, that's kind of how I see it again. Next fight card. Okay, so next fight card we got is the Showtime fight card between Ericsson Lubin and Sebastian Fondoro. It's going to be a great fight. Now, I did look through the actual, um, the actual card itself. There's not a lot of these guys I know, so I'm only really going to talk about the, 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 um, the co-main and then the main event. So Tony Harrison against Sergio Garcia. Now, I actually only just realized that Sergio Garcia fought Sebastian Fondora in his last fight and lost on a UD. I haven't seen that fight, so I now need to watch that fight because um, Garcia I always thought was a nice little technical boxer. Wasn't, you know, didn't have great power or anything, but, you know, as a, a Spaniard had pretty good technique and, you know, was very crafty and was good at scoring points and sort of winning rounds in that, in that fashion. So I'm going to have to watch that. However, um, I think in terms of skill, Tony Harrison is like levels above um, Sergio Garcia and that's no disrespect to Garcia but um, Harrison is. Um, he hasn't been performing great as of late so he may have very well got over old overnight but I feel like he's got one good run left in him so like another one or two fights whereby he can compete at the upper levels. Now Garcia is more of a European type level fighter, so he's not necessarily at that world level. Maybe he'll never get there. Um, but I do see um, Tony Harrison winning this fight quite comfortably on the UD, um, provided obviously he comes into the ring um, and performs the way we all know he can. Now Erickson Lubin and Sebastian Fondora. Now this to me is a very much a boxer versus puncher type fight but both guys can do a little bit of each um, Lubin has proven in the past that he starts very cold and if you catch him early like you can hurt him early which is what happens when he fought Jamal Charlo um, back in I think it was 2017 uh, I think it was around then now um, since then I think he's racked up is it seven or nine straight wins on the bounce so i do see him being sharp enough to be able to avoid the power punching from fundora 
but with Fondora he throws punches and it seemed almost seems like he never really gets tired especially in the first half of the fight so it's constant pressure um if Lubin can sort of survive that and work his way around him and make it sort of a ball matador type fight then he can win quite comfortably just off of his boxing skills um but Fondora is a very dangerous opponent um however i do think that Lubin is actually just um you know a level above him and i think he will show that so i'm gonna go for lubin to win this fight via decision okay so last but not least we get to the the zone card which sees the return of ryan garcia facing emmanuel to go um there's about four different fights on this card that i'm interested in so um i'll give you a quick uh, prediction on those ones um also if you hear any um wild noise in the background apologies not really much i can do at this point in time but yeah uh, patrick texera against paul venezuela uh, siesta uh yep i think texera is going to get sort of a nice little comeback win um that's going to put him in position to be able to maybe challenge for a, a 154 title again sort of within the next year or so um gabe Rosado against shane mosley jr now realistically um, Shane Mosley Jr. doesn't have a great upside. He's a good, he's you know, he's a good little fighter, but I don't think he's got the skills to beat Gabe Rosado. And he definitely seems to be having an Indian summer at the moment. And he's a guy that you can transition into bigger fights because as much fights as he's lost, which I think is like 13, uh, 14 fights he's actually lost, he's still like good value for money. He still draws a lot. Um, he still sells fights. He talks well. Like people know him. People love him. He's got a cult following. He's definitely the American Shazora. So um, I think he's going to be too much for um, Shane Mosley Jr. And ultimately, he won't get screwed on the scorecards um, in this one. And I actually think he might make sure this fight ends inside the distance. Next, we talk about Marlena Sparza and Nioka Fujioka. Now, Fujioka, I think she's held the belt for a long time i think she's held about for about six years and she's about 46 46 47 so she's an older woman but she's got a gas tank and thus far no one's really been able to like get her out of the game um marlon espar is a very good technical boxer um was a pretty good amateur however she doesn't have any power whatsoever and she's got a horrible gas tank and one thing about Fujioka she comes on really strong in the later rounds she starts off a little slow but she gets stronger as the rounds go on and Esparza fades now if Esparza can manage her stamina correctly and win sort of the first half of the fight sort of the first four to five rounds fairly convincingly in terms of like the judges and the car and the sort of the audience that's in the background she will end up getting this on decision because she is the you know official golden boy fighter she has a bit more of the upside plus they're still looking to do the rematch between her and Sinisa Estrada at some point at some kind of catch weight so it makes sense for her to, story to continue with a victory and that narrative however if she can't manage the you know the gas effectively and Fujioka comes on I can definitely see this fight ending with a split decision because it will be a split decision she won't get a unanimous but a split decision Fujioka victory or even a very very late stoppage if she just grinds Esparza down that's a very real possibility that's a great fight and I'm looking forward to it but I'm gonna go with Esparza on points just because I feel like she's got too much of an upside for the promotion for her not to now main event time Ryan Garcia Emmanuel to go now to go lost his very first fight via knockout but since then hasn't lost the next 32 the level of opponent I can't really speak to the total quality of all of them and I'm not going to bother go through to dissect but I feel like this will be Ryan Garcia pretty much doing what he wants from about round three onwards um, 
it's going to be very rusty those first couple of rounds and Tagore is going to use that to his advantage I feel like he's going to try pounce on him and try and hurt him early and just take it to him and make Ryan uncomfortable because we all know that mentally he may not be the strongest when the pressure is on so outside of that um, I can see Ryan trying to keep it long uh, moving behind the power jab maybe sort of doubling it up um, hitting to the body as well you know that's what he stopped Luke Campbell with so I feel like he's going to be trying to target the body as well um, to go is going to be tough he's going to be durable but he's going to be there to be hit as well so I feel as if between rounds seven and nine um, Ryan Garcia is going to end up getting a KO victory could happen a little bit earlier but that's where my prediction is so let me recap the main ones okay so um i think that triple g is going to stop Morata round i think i said uh, nine or ten um i believe that um michaela mayor is going to stop jennifer han possibly in round um eight nine or ten or definitely get a ud uh who else? Like Lubin. I think Lubin's going to get a decision. I think Tony Harrison's going to get a decision against Sergio Garcia. Um, I think Marlena Spars is going to get the decision against Fujioka. I think um, Gabe Rosado might end up stopping Shane Mosley Jr. Um, and I believe that Ryan Garcia is going to stop Emmanuel to go um, between sort of around seven and nine. Um, so those are my picks. Those are my opinions. Put yours down in the comments. Let's see um, how many of them I get right, how many of them you get right. Um, and yeah, let's just all enjoy. But for right now, basis picks locked.